And now, to keep us inspired about the game-changing impacts in the region, we're going to hear from Peter Magnisalis, who is a lifelong local resident and visionary with experience in large-scale property development and construction. He has the tick of approval from the state government to bring the snow to the foot of the mountains and with it, millions of visitors to the west. Please welcome Peter Magnisalis to the stage. Thank you, Richard. Um, it, it's a pleasure to be here today, um, and it's been quite sort of uh, informative this morning, um, and listening to some of the theming and the goals sort of for the region is quite interesting. Um, our Mayor Ted, Todd Carney talked about more visitors, uh, more, more local jobs, uh, more overnight stays, and new attractions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here's Winter Sports World. Um, it's, a, um, it, it's an amazing sort of um, design. We've gone through years and years of um, uh, refining our idea um, and, and the, the whole sort of appearance of the building, but this shows you what the winning architectural design sort of competition is. Uh, brings the, the snow resort into an international sort of standard. Um, and it's, a, it's got very strong connection to country elements, um, and those sticks that you see um, w will be lit up, lit up at night um, to mimic snow falling. So the inspiration is snow blizzard and, and connection to country. So in a nutshell, Winter Sports World's an indoor snow resort. So what we're doing is we're bringing an outdoor ski field and bring, bringing it inside and, and locating it in Penrith alongside N the Nepean River. Um, it features an advanced run, a 300 metre advanced run, and features a lot of other things as well to complete the full ski field experience. We have snow play, we've got dedicated areas for lessons, and then we have a 170 room hotel um, with some of those rooms looking into the snow, so having snow views into the snow play. We have conferencing function rooms uh, with, with snow views. We've got multiple food and beverage offerings that have snow views, so it's all immersive to offer that full ski field holiday um, connection and, and genuine alpine experience. And that, that's, a, that's a perspective from one of the, um, the restaurants looking, looking into the snow play. So why, why snow and why Penrith? So, from a snow point of view, Aussies are quite sort of um, enthusiasts when it comes to snow. We're, we're quite snow crazy as a, as a population. Um, so, for us, it sort of made sense to address the need, which is, you know, we have short seasons, very limited snow climate, unpredictable, um, and we figured that it'd be, it'd be great to have an indoor snow resort that we can control all, all the, the, the environment, no matter what time of, or what day of the year, um, and we can have perfect snow and predictable weather and a perfect, get, perfect guest experience no matter what day of the year. Um, and it is a proven concept worldwide. Um, there is no such thing in Australia. Um, this is the first of its kind, quite ambitious. But um, to put everyone at ease, I guess, we've, there's over 150 indoor snow centres around the world. Um, we've taken and researched um, the sort of top 45 and we've morphed and we like to think ours is the next generation in terms of genuine alpine sort of experience. And why Penrith? Well, the first one, uh, first indoor snow resort for Sydney makes sense, but then you look at Penrith, we've got the new airport coming online um, and it's, it's very easily accessible, close to the M4 motorway, within the Riverlink Tourism Precinct, perfectly, perfectly located in, in, with, with the vibrancy and, and the complementary offering and the thrill that, that Winter Sports World will provide. Um, we, we, we believe we have the best sort of location um, and it, it is the halfway point from the CBD of Sydney to, to the Blue Mountains. So we want to, our goal is to flip, flip it on its head where we get, you know, internationals coming from the airport, staying at Winter Sports World and doing day trips in the city. 
but staying back back at Penrith and 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 um, and and at our sort of winter sports world. Sorry, I skipped one. So the benefits, the benefits for the winter sports world. So <clears throat> this is not us saying it. This is independent, verified um, economists. Um, Thirteen hundred fifty jobs it will generate during construction. Most of them local. Ongoing when we when we open. Thirteen hundred fifty again. Ongoing, most mostly local. Um, with, with the visitor. Um, patronage per annum of 1.35 million uh, visitors per year, which will complement uh, councils uh, or the Penrith areas, uh, existing 1.64 million visitors per annum. So our research shows that the majority of the 1.35 million visitors will be well outside our area. They're going to be coming from everywhere, all over Australia, from all over Australia, um, and also internationally. And we, the, the design, the, the, the idea uh, will be a tru truly uh, landmark, unique sort of offer that will reinforce Penrith as the adventure capital. And there is, there is no such offering uh, in Australia, so there is a, a, a point of difference for the Western Sydney area. And like I said before, we'll have perfect uh, predictable snow no matter what time, what day of the year or what time it is. And this is an important one. We believe it's going to be the catalyst for many other different ideas coming into the area. And hopefully that, this will bring confidence for others to have their big ideas and, and bring them to Western Sydney. Think about Western Sydney first. So from a sustainability point of view, it sounds, you know, I think Penrith is regarded as one of the hottest or the hottest places in Sydney or New South Wales. Um, yeah, so, you know, some might, might sort of scratch their heads and say, well, why are we building an indoor snow resort in, in the hottest part of Sydney? Well, there, there's snow, there's snow centres <clears throat> in deserts. Um, there's snow centres all around the world. Um, what we're basically doing is we're, we're building a, a very big, fancy esky. Um, which creates it, it creates a perfect insulated um, and, and sealed box, um, and we can we can generate snow and we can create snow, um, and that snow doesn't degrade like like as if it's outside because we don't have any wind, we don't have any adverse weather, we have perfect minus four, right? And and that it keeps the snow fresh for longer, um, and and it and it becomes very um, very. Um, efficient in, in, in terms of the energy required. So when you compare it to, you know, um, the, the energy use to, to some of the other uses, it, it, it becomes quite um, efficient. So we're expecting that our energy use is going to be less than a commercial office building, for example. Um, the water for the snow will be, will be less than the water for the hotel. Um, and, and how do we do that? We've got We've got solar harvesting all along the roof. Part of the design excellence competition was how do we maximise more solar? And, and the winning comp competition um, was that, you know, the sticks on the outside of the, of the um, building, they actually do um, a function. They, they, they hold awnings um, to take the sunlight off the, off the facade to stop heat gain. But those awnings are solar panels. So we've actually got more solar and, and we're, we've estimated the, the amount of solar harvesting we can generate, we can look after around 60 to 65% of the electrical needs for the snow, for example. Uh, when we look at the snow, uh, the water for the snow, um, we've got almost a closed loop system where we capture the defrost and the condensation and they go back into snow making. There is a small deficit, but we've got a 1.6 million litre water tank that is connected to the roof that will more than, more than cater for our water for the snowmaking needs. And the other important point is, is this, is, this is real snow we're talking about. Um, so it's not, it's not, the, not plastic stuff, it's not sawdust. Back in the 30s, the, the, that, the, the first generation snow centers was, was like a sawdust mi mix. But this is actually real snow, just like the ski fields, made from water, just water. 
um, and it's all about going back to that esky. It's got to be, got to be the perfect environment to get to that level. So it's non-toxic um, uh, and, and, and um, cooling. Sorry, I, I skipped again. So the milestones achieved so far, <clears throat> I came up with the idea in 2015 and I called it the BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, and <clears throat> I never knew these things existed. Um, and it wasn't until I started sort of researching quickly after I came up with this crazy idea that these things did exist and they were called indoor snow centres. And over the years, um, we've... we've We've worked on the designs and, and I've been able to assemble a good key team um, and we lodged the planning proposal in 2018. We got the planning proposal finalised in 2021. The design excellence and the design competition process, very extensive process, uh, we went through that in 2022 and that was three architects competing for the designs of the winner sports world um, and I think we've We've, we've come out of that with an, an amazing international sort of standard um, iconic design for, a, for an indoor snow centre and I think it it's perfectly explains or tells what Winter Sports World is about on the inside. So it, it's, a, it's quite a high energy, thrill, thrillish, snow blizzard type um, uh, design which, which is a perfect, perfect um, complementary sort of feeder to what we're about as, as Winter Sports World. And we lodged the SSDA, or the State Significant Development Approval, in late 2022. Um, and that was, just to give you an idea, I think I counted, we have 45 different consultants on, on, on board just to get to the DA submission, State Significant DA submission. So there's 45 different consultants. Um, so it's very extensive, very technical um, sort of milestone. Um, and we're able to achieve our, our biggest, biggest milestone to date, which is the state significant development approval. So um, in January this year. So I, I think it's moved from sort of an idea to something that is actually coming to life now. In terms of the next steps, we're, we're sort of setting up what I call the platform to bring Winter Sports World to life. And um, we're assembling our stakeholders, our operators, and um, we, we'll be commencing the detailed design and engineering mid-year with um, our, uh, our plans to commence construction 12 months from now. And the c expected construction sort of build time frame is expected to be between two and a half to three years. So um, thank you very much, everyone. I, I'm, I'm quite excited about this. It, it's it's going to come to life. Um, feel free to, to follow the socials on, on it because you, you're going to see some things happening very soon. I'm quite excited about this. I think he understated his excitement there. We're very excited. Um, what can you say? River, mountains, lakes, and now snow. You'd better believe it. Not just what winter sports world will offer, but what it means for other business and Western Sydney visitation in general. So congratulations, Peter. It's taking good shape, and we're right behind you.